Franklin Roosevelt was renominated for a third term on the first ballot in Chicago, everybody knew where he stood. Maybe he and Mr. Wilkie weren't so far apart as far as ideas are concerned. And Mr. Wilkie was an American to be reckoned with, too. But the people wanted FDR again. And they put him back in the White House for the third term, which was something that never happened in our history before. We loved freedom, all right, and we were going to hold on to it. Hitler was getting all the breaks, but sooner or later, he was due to make a mistake. It came sooner, not later. And when it came, it was a Lulu. In June 1941, the Nazis took on Russia. They moved forward like a bulldozer until they hit Stalingrad. Then Fritzi found out it was a long way back. Meanwhile, other big things were going on. In the North Atlantic, on board a battle wagon, FDR and Winston Churchill signed a new lease on life for democracy, the Atlantic Charter. It backed up the famous Four Freedoms. It started a new world, which was going to be a better world all around. Remember those high-hatted gents with the glasses and the buck teeth? They came to Washington to talk peace in December 1941. And as they stalled and grinned and bowed and scraped, their pals were moving a fleet of ships and planes toward Pearl Harbor. We were finally in it and in it up to our necks. Japan attack us. Ridiculous. They're bluffing, that's all. Besides, they're our friends. We do business with them. Sure, we sold them oil and scrap iron. Later on, they sent it back to us, like this. Then FDR gave our answer to Japan, together with a promise. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. With confidence in our armed forces, with the unbounding determination of our people, we will gain the inevitable triumph, so help us God. Two weeks after Pearl Harbor, FDR and Winston Churchill met again in Washington set up the Declaration of the United Nations. Later, they made plans to invade North Africa. And we landed there on November 7th. We were hitting back and hitting hard. There was no pushover. I was in Kasserine Pass myself, and I ought to know. But we weren't expecting a pushover. We just wanted to get a start, that's all, and keep moving. The G.I.s weren't the only ones who were visiting Africa during the open tourist season. 
I remember it was nothing but spit and polish all that morning. The top kick was looking us over the way a dame looks for that run in her nylon. And he got us out in formation like it was a fire drill. But it was worth it, brother. I almost swallowed my helmet strap when I looked into that lead car and saw FDR in person, smile and all. Casablanca had other guests, too. In this meeting, the President and Winston Churchill made up their minds. And we made up our minds that there'd be one finish to this war, unconditional surrender. Midway in Guadalcanal started us off. Next came Africa, Sicily, and Rome. While Il Duce was running like a winner in a rat race, Joe Stalin's boys were busy, too, at Stalingrad. Leningrad, Rostov. The Krauts were getting slammed back to Berlin and taking a licking all the way. In Cairo, Egypt, in November 1943, Franklin Roosevelt, Winston Churchill, and Chiang Kai-shek held another meeting. They weren't there to look at the pyramids. They were there to put the finger on Japan. A few days later, FDR and Prime Minister Churchill moved on to Tehran, Persia. At Tehran, they were joined by Stalin. By the time that meeting was over, Adolf and Benito were just about the worst insurance risks in the world. There was goodwill here in Tehran, goodwill and lots of cooperation. We came here with hope and determination, Franklin Roosevelt said. We leave here friends in fact, in spirit, and in purpose. June 6th, Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization, and to set free a suffering humanity. Lead them straight and true. Give strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts, steadfastness in their faith. They will need thy blessings. Their road will be long and hard. For the enemy is strong. He may hurl back our forces. Success may not come with rushing speed, but we shall return again and again. And we know that by thy grace and by the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. They will be sore tried by night and by day without rest until the victory is won. The darkness will be rent by noise and flame. Men's souls will be shaken with the violences of war. For these men are lately drawn from the ways of peace. They fight not for the lust of conquest. They fight to end conquest. They fight to liberate. They fight to let justice arise and tolerance and goodwill among all thy people. They yearn but for the end of battle for their return to the haven of home. Some will never return. Embrace these, Father, and receive them, thy heroic servants, into thy kingdom. And for us at home, 
fathers, mothers, children, wives, sisters, and brothers of brave men overseas whose thoughts and prayers are ever with them. Help us, almighty God, to rededicate ourselves in renewed faith in thee in this hour of great sacrifice. Give us strength to strengthen our daily tasks, to redouble the contributions we make in the physical and the material support of our armed forces. And let our hearts be stout to wait out the long travel to bear sorrows that may come, to impart our courage unto our sons, wheresoever they may be. And, O oh Lord, give us faith. Give us faith in thee, faith in our sons, faith in each other, faith in our united crusade. Let not the keenness of our spirit ever be dulled. Let not the impacts of temporary events, of temporal matters of but fleeting moment, let not these deter us in our unconquerable purpose. With thy blessing, we shall prevail over the unholy forces of our enemy. Help us to conquer the apostles of greed and racial arrogances. Lead us to the saving of our country. And with our sister nations into a world unity that will spell a sure peace. A peace invulnerable to the schemings of unworthy men. And a peace that will let all men live in freedom, reaping the just rewards of their honest toil. Thy will be done, almighty God. Amen.